Hey there! Daria here. You're watching the Mavave vlog. Did you already see our episode about Ellen DeGeneres? We talked about how to shoot a video interview, just like the Ellen DeGeneres show and her many imitators do. At the end of the last episode, we promised to make a separate video about the way we edited the interview. In other words, how to synchronize video and audio feeds from multiple cameras. We're keeping our promise. This episode of the Mavavi vlog will be useful for anyone who wants to learn how to best shoot an interview or any other event using multiple cameras simultaneously and combine them into one video clip. Let's get started! Most commonly, amateur videos are one-shot videos. Simply put, this means you have one camera, you press rec, and you shoot without pauses or cut-ins. You can either shoot with a camera that moves, as you walk back and forth with the camera, or from a tripod. This method of shooting is considered the easiest, because it's the simplest way to make a video. You just shoot what you see with one camera, and there is minimal editing. But don't associate the one-shot method just with amateur videos. This trick is often used by professionals, too. For them, it is no longer just a simple way to make a video. For example, the film Birdman, directed by Alejandro González in Eritu, was shot with one camera, as if there were no editing cuts at all. The film runs for about two hours. Emmanuel Lubetsky, the cinematographer, won an Oscar for his work in 2015, the third of his career. Music video directors also like the one-shot technique. Remember the video of Kaiser's song Hideaway? or the British punk rockers' slaves. There is also the shocking clip This is America by rapper Childish Gambino. This technique might seem corny to some, but it's hardly a thing of the past. Video blogging has brought this approach back to life. One person with one camera, shooting from a first-person perspective, creates a powerful presence that subscribers seem to like. One-shot filming has obvious disadvantages. You cannot instantly change shots, for example, from a long shot to a close-up and back. If the camera is mobile, you need to be always moving around and thinking about focal point and stabilization. In this case, the video could get clunky or even boring. When it is more important to show all the details of what's happening, rather than to create a first-person effect, multi-camera filming is better. In this case, you choose the shooting positions and shot sizes in advance, and then, during the editing, you create a complete picture of what's going on. If we're talking about a stage shooting, then usually it's talk shows, interviews and music videos that are recorded with multiple cameras. In these instances, all or most of the cameras are usually fixed on tripods and take still pictures of the same size from preset points. For example, close-up cameras for the main characters in a broadcast, plus one or two cameras for a long shot. Sometimes a mobile camera is added for another long shot, but this is not common for television. When shooting a video story, that is, non-stop events such as travel, festivals, concerts or performances, there is usually a group of two or three operators with moving cameras. They agree in advance who is shooting what. For example, camera person 1 is responsible for close-ups of the artist on the stage and the characters in the event. Operator 2 can handle the long shots. Operator 3 is also in charge of a wide shot, but from a different perspective. This enables the editor to come up with a comprehensive video report from the footage. Viewers will see everything in detail and be easily able to understand what and how things happened that day. Shooting In this instance, we are shooting an interview in the Ellen DeGeneres style. It is stage shooting. We have the set ready in advance. We have positioned our characters and placed our cameras, having picked a shooting perspective and frame size for each. We have three cameras on deck. Each one is mounted on a tripod. One close-up for the guest, one close-up for the host, and one long shot. We record the sound with two level ears, each one connected to the corresponding camera with a close-up. During the editing, I'll mix the two audio tracks together. Be sure to check the volume setting for the microphones on your camera to ensure that the people can be heard properly and without distortion. Give some thought in advance, that is, at the shooting stage, to how you're going to synchronize the tracks from the different cameras. You can hardly press the recording button simultaneously on all the three cameras. You may not even attempt it. The sync process takes place in the editing stage. Well now, we've switched on all three cameras and recording is simultaneous. We need a starting point, a moment that will indicate the beginning and will help us synchronize the three different shots. The trick here is to use the sound, since it's being recorded for three different audio tracks, 
from the built-in microphone on the long shot camera and from the lavaliers on the other two cameras. I'm holding a clapperboard. As it turned out, it's not just a souvenir, but a very useful item. It'll come in handy at this very moment. With this clap, I've just defined the initial point. When I start editing, I'll be easily able to find this clap on three audio tracks, which will enable me to synchronize the images from all the three different cameras. If you don't have a clapperboard handy, well, you may just clap your hands loudly. Editing. There is no need for a professional video editing program. You can do the multicam editing even using simple software like Mavave Video Editor. I'll start by importing all the footage I've shot into the program. Now, on the timeline, I have the three video clips from the three cameras. Let's arrange them one on top of the other. I'll leave the long shot clip at the bottom and place the two close-up clips on top of it. Here you'll need to choose how the upper clips will be applied to the lowest one. Double-click the upper clip and select Cover in the preview window. Then click Apply. Let's do the same with the other close-up clip. Right now all the clips are stacked evenly, but aren't synchronized. You do remember that the camera started recording not quite right away, right? Both the video and the audio from different cameras sometimes run ahead and sometimes lag. When I first tried multi-camera editing, I struggled to synchronize the footage from different cameras using lip movements. That was a huge fail. Don't make the same mistakes I did. Instead, take a close look at the audio clips. Each of the three has an obvious standalone lip. This refers to the starting point we marked with the clap sound when shooting. Now you know that waveforms in Movavi Video Editor are there for a reason. In our case, they are super helpful for synchronizing. I simply align the clips with this single peak. And it's done! Now I can be sure all the rest is perfectly in sync. Next comes an easy part. I continue editing, choosing one of the three shots I have for a particular moment. It is important not to move the clips by accident, though. This particular interview starts with the presenter's question. Daria, I know you well, but could you please tell more? I'll go for a close-up. Since the corresponding clip is already there at the very top, I don't have to do anything with it. Almost every video editing program follows the same video track logic. If there are multiple video tracks on the timeline, you see the clips on the top of a stack in the frame. In our case, all the clips are non-transparent footage. This means that at any particular moment, I can only see the clip on the very top, no matter what is underneath. Next, I need a guest to appear in the video. The close-up with the guest is on the second track. How do I make it visible? I can only see the first camera footage right now. Well, I might have a clue already. I'll use the scissors tool and make two cuts on the upper clip and then I'll delete this piece. As you can see, I now have the second camera in the preview window. Just what I wanted. I can just drag the edges of the two upper clips to define exactly when it switches from the first camera to the second one. All right. But what about the long shot footage, you may ask? Well, it works the same way. When I decide to go for a wide shot, I use the scissors tool again and make blank spaces on the two upper clips. This is how it looks on the timeline. Let's see what I have in the preview window. It starts with the presenter's close-up, then the guest's close-up, Then both of them in the wide shot, the presenter again, the guest again. Most frequently, I'm going to use close-ups. We can treat them as a standard element when it comes to interviews. We get to see the host when he or she asks a question and the guest when he or she responds. In general, wide shots don't last very long, and I used to avoid the monotony of switching from guest to presenter and back over and over again. It's all done with the picture. Let's get back to the sound again. Let's adjust the balance first. Make sure every character in the interview can be heard well and the volume level remains unchanged. Select the clip, click Audio Properties and modify the volume level if necessary. There is even an easier way. You can just drag this line on the audio clip. Now all three tracks are audible. It's not good. 
We only need the sound from the presenter's camera when he asks a question. Whenever he's silent, we don't need that sound source. Otherwise, when one of the interview characters speaks, we'll hear background sound and random sounds from the other two mics. Here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to select all the clips on the timeline, right-click on them and select Detach Audio. This will let me edit the audio clip separately from the video. I'm going to do the same thing with another track. The presenter's audio track is fine. Whenever he is silent, there is no sound. But the sound from the second camera is always audible, even when the character isn't saying a word. I'll handle this with the same scissors tool we just used for the video track. Here is a tip. I want to talk you out of editing back to back. Instead, I'd recommend you edit with a bit of overlapping. When you record sound from multiple microphones and cameras, the level of background sound may vary. It can be noticeable if you add it back to back. That's why I take the overlapping approach, to be on the safe side. If it doesn't help either way, you can use a smooth fading in and fading out on the audio clip. To do this, just right-click on the white line on the clip. That's the level of your clip volume. Then choose Add Volume Point. You'll need at least four points like this to create heels at the start and at the end of the clip. You can add more points to create even smoother fading in and fading out of the volume manually. It's a very useful tool if you care about precision when dealing with the sound on your videos. Now all that's left to edit is the main track. The sound from the built-in mic on the longshot camera is still audible throughout the interview. It can be removed completely or set to zero volume. But I'd rather keep it, just a very little, so there is a permanent hint of background noise with no leaps or cuts. By the way, if you use background music for your interview, you can upload ready-to-use tracks from the built-in collection in Mavave Video Editor. Or you can upload your own choice of music. Keep in mind, however, that you have to lower the volume of your background music so that the people can still be heard. Now it's time we see how everything has turned out. Let's take a look. Daria, I know you well, but could you please tell more about yourself to our viewers? Uh, yeah, sure. My name is Daria and I am one of the hosts on the Mavavi channel. Uh, we make videos every single week and uh, it's all about how to make videos right and how to edit them properly. Well, it's pretty cool and it's so exciting for our viewers. Great, great. Uh, do you remember the moment when you first started being a YouTube host. How did that feel? Oh yeah, I do remember that. It was pretty nervous, you know. My hands were trembling, I was all shaken, I mixed up all the words and it took us ages to uh, shoot even a single scene. But that was pretty exciting, I really loved this. Thanks for watching this episode. Your first multicam shooting may not go smoothly, but don't give up on it. Practice truly matters here. Use our tips and you'll soon learn how to shoot and edit videos with multiple cameras in your own unique style. It may be anything, from interviews and talk shows on YouTube, to music videos, video reports and stories, and vlogs. Mind you, a subscription to the Mavavi channel and the notification bell will guarantee you won't miss our next super helpful episode. In this video, I've talked a lot about shots. Here is a detailed episode on the types of shots and on montage by size. Check it out! I'll see you in a week on the Mavavi vlog. Stay positive, take care!